In this video, we'll see how to use the binomial distribution to solve a typical application in a statistics course. The sample problem we'll be viewing says, in the 2013 Jerry's Artorama Art Supplies catalog, there are 560 pages. Eight of the pages feature signature artists. Suppose we randomly sample 100 pages, and then it asks us to find some probabilities involving those results. The first thing you wanna do uh, is to identify n, p, and x, where n is the number of trials that you have in your problem, often thought of as your sample size. p is the probability of success. So in a binomial experiment, there is only two possible outcomes, either success or failure. And uh, we want to identify the probability of that happening. And then x is your random variable, uh, which is the number of successes. In our problem, you can see that we are randomly sampling 100 pages. So the fixed number of trials, n, is 100. The number of successes is going to be some whole number that ranges from 0 up to n. So 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 100. Any whole number between 0 and 100. Now we're going to say that a success when we sample one of these pages is that it features a signature artist. Since 8 of the 560 pages feature a signature artist, the probability of success is 8 out of 560. This reduces to 1 over 70, so 1 out of 70 pages feature a signature artist, uh, and that's about 1.4%. Q is the failure, in this case, that we select a page that does not feature a signature artist. So it's going to be the complement of that, so the 552 pages that do not feature a signature artist, which is 69 out of 70, and that's about 98.6%. So notice that these add up to 100%, and these add up to 1%. Once we have those basic numbers, we can create a distribution table and graph. So sometimes the table is called the distribution and the graph is called a histogram. And the two most common types of technology to use for doing this in a statistics class are Excel and the graphing calculator. And so there's the syntax we'd want to use in each of those, and I'll be demonstrating with Excel. So we'll create a quick table, uh, putting in the first column x, and then numbers 0, 1, 2, and that should be enough if you select those and then autofill down, you can get numbers from 0 to 100 pretty quickly. All right, and then the probability of getting those x values goes next to it. And so equals binome dist. So type in binome and you get your binomial distribution functions, and it's the top one there. And you can click on that to get more information on how it works, but it tells you what you want to put in. First is the number of successes, which is x, so we want to use the cell reference, not the number. Then the number of trials, which is n, we'll just put in 100 now. The probability of success, which is 1 over 70, or 8 over 560. And for cumulative, we're going to put that on false for now. Close your parentheses, and go ahead and hit enter. And these are going to be the decimal results of those. You can autofill this as well. And then real quickly, we'll just center and add some borders to make it look a little nicer. And now we have a probability distribution table. Let's go ahead and get the histogram or graph to go with this. So if you go to insert and you were to just try to use the histogram feature in Excel, you'd get something like that. Um, if you try to do a typical column chart, um, you get that. And so the problem here is, is all these probabilities end up getting really close to zero pretty early on. And so in this case, I think it's okay to truncate the tail um, because to really observe the pattern, you need to look at what's going on in like the first 10 numbers. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the first 10 numbers and then let's go ahead and get a column chart. And then there's two main things I wanna fix with this. One is the gap between the bars. So a histogram typically doesn't have a gap. So right click on the bars, format data series, and then change the gap width to like 2% just so you can see some lines in between. All right, the other problem is this starts at one and we want it to start at zero. So you can change these labels, just right click and do select data. And then you can edit the horizontal axis labels. So hit edit and then grab the numbers you do want and then you'll see they've already changed. Now you can also change the title and you can add in some axis titles which would be good. So the horizontal axis here represents the number of pages that feature a signature artist. The vertical axis is the probability. And you can type those in if you need to present this to other people. 
All right, but we're ready to now use this to answer some questions. So let's do step three, which is answer the questions about probability. So the wording on these might say that x is equal to a specific number, or that x is less than some number, or greater, or between two values. And so what we're going to do is um, go ahead and go through this, but this shows the syntax on the graphing calculator and Excel um, using some numbers for uh, p and n that are stated up there. But let's do it for our problem. So the questions, the first was the probability that two pages feature signature artists. And so that's the probability that the random variable is exactly equal to two. So for any specific value of the random variable, you can just find that row in the table. Right here is x equals two, and there's your probability. So usually you want to give the answer to these in terms of a decimal number and use four decimal places before you round. So 0.2466. Uh, I did give the rounded percent numbers just for uh, understanding the problem better. So that's about 25 percent. All right. The next one, find the probability that at most six pages feature signature artists. So that means six is the most x can be, and we know x starts at zero, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is the same as x less than or equal to six. Now, if you want a bunch of these, you know from the rules of probability that the probability of a or b for independent events is probability of a plus probability of b. So you can just add these up for a range, and zero to six would give you those. Now, if you just select the cells, then you'll see the sum appears down there, but it's very tiny. So um, one other way to do that is you can use that binome dist, that uh, binome dist function that we had earlier, and use pretty much the same beginning parts, right? So x and use the cell reference trials is 100, probability of success is still 1 out of 70, but for cumulative this time we're going to use true. And so when cumulative is on true, it's going to add up all the numbers above it and give you that total. And so there, that's the same as adding up all these numbers. So rounded to four decimal places, we have 0.9994, uh, which is just very close to 100%. Okay, what about the probability that more than three pages feature signature artists? So uh, more than three would be four all the way to 100. So you could certainly highlight from four to 100. Um, but that seems kind of tedious, plus what if I had 10,000 rows in my table, right? Um, so for larger data sets, the, a trick that's really good to know is all these numbers add up to 1, right? And so if we just took 0 to 3, right, and found out what that was, we could subtract that from 1, and that would give us the same as 4 to 100. So again, you can get 0 to 3 just by highlighting those, and it appears there. Uh, you can also use this cumulative distribution. Thing that we just set up. Oops, pasted that in the wrong place. There we go. So 0 to 3 um, goes to 0.9443, uh, and if we want to just do 1 minus that, we can get uh, 0.0557, uh, which is about 5.6%. All right, that gives you some basic uh, idea of how to solve these problems for binomial distribution applications. And uh, I want to give some attribution credit to OpenStax. I took this problem from uh, Introductory Statistics by OpenStax, which is CC by 4.0. Thank you.